part of this crazy group of people. And the next one is our CCO. <laughs> Okay, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, so my name is. Uh, I'm also a big young man. Uh, I'm also a maker. Uh, I have four kids. So I'm really not a very uh, deep in all the technical stuff, but more I'm the English guy who uh, uh, knows about integrations. Um, and uh, yeah, I like to make tools, but then for uh, for software, right? so uh, change management. Uh, mm -hmm. Guys, you can sit here. Uh, there, are, there, are all, um, there are three seats over here yeah. if you want to sit down. There, there, here. In the middle? Come sit, sit, sit. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, why should you use Slurba? Uh, we have already a, a great tool. The Arduino ID is a great tool by itself. Uh, we appreciate the, the Arduino ID and we believe that it has its own reason to exist and it does what it what it has it has to do, it does it pretty well. So we are not saying that the Arduino ID is something that you should abandon unless you feel the urge to abandon. Because but you might have Big, big projects, or let's say, I'm not saying big projects, enormous corporate projects. We are saying projects that span more than a couple of files. That's where uh, Arduino ID shows its limitations, and where uh, more integrated environments like Clips are good at. So. Here is a comparison between the Arduino ID and Sluga. Uh, obviously, the list under Sluga is pretty long, but what really misses in Arduino ID, so we are on pair with the basic features. We, are ba we have the basic features. We both support multi-platform. We are both open source. And we have also support, we are also supporting almost the same boards that Arduino ID does. And we have a few more, but that's not a big deal. It's not in the boards. Especially because we use or reuse a lot of stuff provided already by Arduino ID. Code completion is something Arduino ID misses. Drill down, you can control click onto classes, methods, functions, and open the function. Indexing, so you know if you are calling the right, if you are uh, mistyping a function name. Debugging, unit testing, version control. Uh, version control, in our opinion, is fundamental to development when you move from doing your own little sketch to something that you want to share. So we have a, a Good integration with Git and GitHub. Subversion also. And we are a clip space. When we say we are a clip space, we say that we have hundreds of plugins for a clip which work within Luma and multi which is you don't need multiple windows to, to manage multiple projects. And now we go because we don't like to do slideware, we do software. So the site, the website, right? Sorry. The website uh, is where you can download the uh, uh, Sluber product or the Arduino ID, they are the Sluber plugin. So the, the software is built in two versions. You can download an entire package which includes Eclipse any dependency and the Sluber plugin, or you can go for the plugin. Maybe you uh, already have a Clips installed and you it's already pre-configured with all your settings. You can go for the plugin. There are we support Linux, Windows, and macOS officially, and anything that is not in that list might work or not. I mean, what else is there? What else? Yeah. <laughs> what else is there? 
Uh, a friend of mine has also managed to run into a Raspberry Pi. It's not performing greatly, but it runs. Um, you can also switch to the archive version. We highly recommend to stay on the stable version. If you are, uh, if you like to stay on the bleeding edge, you are welcome to join the few that run the nightly build. But it's fringe uh, science. <laughs> Um, so that's where you can start. There is plenty of documentation and there is mailing list. Support is run through uh, GitHub and uh, help is always welcome. So we have a Python link. Do we have the link, the URL of the Python link? Okay. okay. So back to the sheets. Coding time. So as I said, uh, we prefer uh, software over slideware. You want to do, to do it for me? Yes, please. Thank you. So we are going to show you some real project, how to use Schluger to program not only Arduino boards, but also other, uh, other boards. And we will also go farther later on. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Okay, um, welcome, uh, uh, all of people, that's uh, really nice. Um, can I see uh, who already tried Slurber? You tried it. Anybody in the audience? That's great. And, and you, you already did Arduino IDE? Can I see the hands of the people that did Arduino IDE? All right, okay, cool. So what we try to do is, uh, when we build uh, the plugin, um, there is a switch from uh, the Arduino IDE where all is safe, it's like a sandbox, right? You get your tools, and you can make your uh, pro projects. There's not really uh, a lot that you can do wrong. And then you move over to Eclipse, and then you can do everything wrong, right? So it can be a really intimidating environment, especially when you start uh, with your uh, first steps in Eclipse. So what we, what we did is we also made it uh, uh, a little bit like Arduino. Uh, so you can see you will recognize a lot of things from the Arduino IDE because we just copied it <laughs> in, um, in our uh, plugin. So um, um, let me show you how this works. So what I will do, I will create this project. So we are going to use uh, uh, Blink uh, uh, by creating a project inside Eclipse. Uh, and then I will show you some of the features like code completion, drill down, building an upload, um, and uh, uh, and some of the goodies like the serial monitor and the blocker in this uh, little uh, demonstration. Okay, so um, like uh, Roberto said, from the website you go sugar.io, you go to uh, the stable version, uh, for example, for Windows. If I go there. Uh, I can download 64 bits or uh, 32 bits, uh, install it, and then unzip it, uh, and, uh, and it will appear in my um, in a uh, directory. So let's see. Let me show you this. So I'm on my C drive here. I have Sluber installed, and it's just an installation with Sluber IDE.exe. And if you start it, then you will see uh, the uh, IDE show up like this. Am I? Am I? Okay, this is the test. <laughs> but this is Eclipse. If nobody has ever seen Eclipse uh, before, that's just Eclipse plus us. Right. So in the Arduino IDE, in the Arduino IDE, no, no. In the Arduino IDE, you, you would see this, right? New file and then create a new project, but um, for new file, but with Eclipse, you will have uh, the Project Explorer, where you can have multiple projects, and uh, a, a number of views that will help you uh, work uh, uh, more efficiently. So let's make a new project. I right-click here, and I say New. I can do New Project, but you can already recognize new Arduino sketch. It's not the same thing, uh, but you will recognize it, and then you will click on it to uh, actually do it. Um, so we ask for a project name. So let's uh, call this uh, Hello World. Hello World. I'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, so I press next, uh, and now I can select my uh, my hardware hardware board um, from the list. I think it's the same, uh, sort of the same as with uh, the Arduino IDE. Um, okay, so defaults, and then you select your COM board uh, and your um, so where your board is uh, located. Then we press next, um, and here we can uh, do. Uh, four different options. We can start with some default empty files, right? So maybe the, the hardware developer say, okay, give me a blank C uh, file, and I will start uh, coding from there. Uh, you can also set up your own custom templates. Huh? So if you have uh, some coding standards or uh, some documentation standards, you can use your custom templates. But of course, we all like in the beginning to start from a sample sketch. So these sample sketches are here. Um, and uh, yeah, then I can uh, select, uh, for example, um, shall I already do um, this one? Yeah, why not? Let me show you. Uh, well, probably it's easy if you open up the examples. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to show them what yeah, we I was, I, was I was going to do that. Thank you, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here are the things that are already in. Uh, in uh, uh, I do not like right? So you start with blink, and then you say blink is not okay, blink without delay is better. And so you can learn uh, the IDE a little bit. But if you say, okay, hey, I want to check out blink, um, if you want to check out and start learning Arduino, the best way to do it is in the Arduino IDE, right? That's, that's safe. Uh, but if you want to start uh, ramp up your, uh, your projects, then you uh, want to do it with, um, with this project. Okay, finish. Project will be created, and normally what you would see here when we do that, you would see your sketch "Hello World." I know in this blank area, but if I now open up my uh, project, you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. So we hide nothing; everything is visible to you. So, for example, I, if I take this uh, uh, this Snake Affair uh, I know file, um, I can um, take a look at my source code. It blinks some LEDs, I don't know which LED exactly here. Uh, and it prints some message to the serial monitor and it uses the blocker. So what can you do with, uh, 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 what you can not do with the Arduino IDE? For example, um, let's take a look at this method, right, MIDIS. So what does it do, right? So it is a library provided by Arduino, and um, yeah, it, it gives you some milliseconds. But maybe you're curious in what it does. Maybe you want to make a better method, uh, which is faster, or maybe you want to make uh, a nanos or whatever. So what you can do here, you can hover over this method, and then it, then it will show you the C code. And if I'm interested in where is this code, I can press F3 on it, or Control click It will open that file, and it shows you also directly in what library it is located. And then you can see all the internal functions. And if you want, you can um, change it, right? Uh, change it um, uh, so you, you have access to, to everything. Also, if you, have, if you are, uh, are concerned about memory, you might want to remove some of the files you, you don't use to make a smaller footprint for your, uh, for your device. Okay. So let's start coding a little bit um, uh, to show you some of the features. Um, so one of the things that, that uh, Eclipse developers do, they want to type as, as less as possible, right? So um, in the Arduino IDE, if I want to use this method, I have to type get, let, blink, value, etc. So it's a, uh, that's a terrible way of programming. So what we do is get B, for example, then we press control space. Okay, <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. And then it already completes uh, the code, and I only have to type in my uh, my default. So this is default for uh, for Eclipse, uh, but it is a fantastic way of um, of, uh, of programming and, and, and getting really um, uh, fast. And there, there are other things. For example, if you want to uh, move this uh, block, you normally copy paste. But what we can do is we press Alt, paste down, and then we move this. Uh, uh, block of code into uh, into my into our source. And there are many uh, uh, shortcut keys like this that will help you be more uh, productive. All right. So um, shall we um, run this? Okay, yeah. Cool. Um, so I'm going to save it. Um, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So I'm, I'm going to make a warning in this code. And for example, what I'm going to do, I say I have defined here current millis. So I'm going to use current millis here. And so I'm going to do nothing with it, right? So it already says, hey, there's a little buggy in here because you don't use it. Uh, but I'm going to stick it in, uh, keep it in, and then uh, compile it or upload it. So then we have the same buttons that you can also recognize from the Arduino. Just to get uh, familiar with more of you. You maybe already saw it. Double clicking on a, on a title will bring it full screen. It's a default eclipse uh, thing. Uh, okay, I lost my uh, very fine to a So maybe you, you saw it. Uh, if you compile a lot of uh, files, uh, sometimes you see warnings and errors. And, and okay, where is it, right? So uh, one of the things that you can do with uh, with uh, Eclipse is okay, find the warning, double click on the file, and it will open the, the file for you uh, exactly on the, uh, the place where the, where the problem is. I mean, little things, but it's really hard to program and, uh, and we get used to it as, as developers, but it's really fantastic uh, functionality. But again... And okay. this incremental build, didn't build all the files here, just built the, the, the changing files. So the first time it's a long build, time consuming, second time it's short. Okay, so let's take a look at the serial monitor. Uh, so what I always do, I just open the um, the, the views. That's my way of working with Eclipse. But we also, of course, have shortcuts over here, and we also have an Arduino menu, uh, which maybe we should call Snooper in the in next releases, where we have uh, uh, yeah stuff specifically for this plugin. So where can you find videos and, and all that kind of stuff, and all the preferences, uh, so that. It, we only see our preferences and not all the preference because it's just terrible when you start with Eclipse. You see we have thousands of preferences, really terrible. Uh, but um, yeah, so these are the things that we have to find to make life easier. Okay, so I'm going to add a serial monitor. Go for. And um, there is my serial monitor. So what happens when I take a look at the code? Uh, we just print this, uh, print a live message to the serial monitor, uh, but we also do plotting. Uh, so we have a plotting library uh, available that you can use um, that will uh, uh, run our plotter, which is here, um, and it will allow you to put some data in the uh, in, in a graphical way. Um, it's also available uh, in the Arduino IDE, uh, but it's really great to uh, yeah, to analyze your uh, your code. And we have a multi-channel um, sort of plotter. I want to say oscilloscope. Oh, okay, the plotter? Oh, okay. Up to six channels. So you can move it uh, up and down, or you can uh, uh, stretch it and find your uh, your uh, yeah your, your data points. All right. So this is um, the basics of the. Arduino IDE in, uh, in Sumo. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. So let's see what's next. Okay, so of course one of the things that you want to do with, uh, with your code is to share it, right? So either you share it through, uh, through uh, your company, your co-workers, uh, so in a closed repository, uh, or you make it open source, right? And, and this is really uh, one of the things that yeah, is, is, is you want to do from, from, out, from inside your tool. Um, so we use GitHub. Uh, anybody uh, who, who knows GitHub? Who uses GitHub? Okay, and, and Git in general, 
Everybody familiar with Git? Yeah? Okay, that's cool. So uh, let's say uh, we have a project on, uh, Git, uh, on GitHub and we want to share it. So let's see how that works. Um, of course, I could go to GitHub. I'm going to find a nice project. I can uh, maybe look for Arduino and for, uh, for Snoober. Um, so one of the things that we do with uh, with uh, Sumer is we uh, uh, allow it in an easy way to import in Eclipse, and it is by doing by using this file. It's created automatically. But when Git, when the uh, Eclipse Git interface finds that file, it knows okay, it's a C plus plus Arduino Sumer project, and it will uh, set up uh, all uh, all the defaults for you. If you are starting with a project that is not built in Eclipse, you might have to do some work to uh, import it in a, in a project before it's, uh, let's say, uh, ready to be an, uh, an official Eclipse project. But this one already is, and you can al uh, also use this uh, yourself, this maker fair, to check it out uh, later. Um, so let's take a look how we want to do that. Uh, I am going to see if I still have that file. So okay, so um, okay, so I'm going to look on GitHub to find interesting projects. Then I find an interesting project. It's here, Maker Fair. So uh, I'm going to click on that, and then you will find a, uh, a URL here to clone your repository. So I copy this to my clipboard. Um, and then I can do two ways. If I'm, I'm a command line a junkie, so I will do it here. But uh, if you want to do it from Sluber, um, that is uh, also possible. Where is my IDE here? Thank you. Um, so let's stop this. So I go to uh, the Git perspective. So if the Git perspective is closed, which is closed by default, then you can click this little uh, button over here. Um, and you can open the Git perspective. So uh, you can see there are no projects yet. So I want to add the project from GitHub uh, to this uh, to this list. So I have copied the URL from GitHub from the repository. You can see this from the green button, and then you copy it here, and then you go into Sumer and you can say paste, or you can say uh, clone a Git repository and we'll add the code to this view. So it will already fill it in. Um, I'm already known to uh, eGit, but then you type your username and password of GitHub over here. Um, and then uh, you will just uh, import that project. Okay. Uh, so I will put it here in the Maker Fair 2017 directory in my Git repository directory. It gets all the code from GitHub uh, and adds it to this view. And if I now take a look at my command line, then you can see that this repository is indeed found over here. All right, so now I have the repository, but I still don't uh, have the, uh, the, the project in my workspace. So for that, you go to this uh, Git repository and you say uh, import projects. Um, Input projects. And if I go back to my Sumo workspace, I can see that I have my Maker Fair uh, uh, project over here. And I can start uh, uh, changing uh, the source code. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to change this uh, file. And I'm going to put in uh, a delay. Smaller delay because I think this code is much better than uh, the one that uh, Yanchi created. Um, okay, and now we have the default uh, uh, Git things, and, and one of the things you can do is press Ctrl hash to commit it, but really the Git staging view is the place uh, where you want to go. Um, so, yeah, these are uh, the files changed. I think the CPP is generated. Yeah, yeah, so the CPP is generated, it shouldn't really be here. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, well, okay, let's check it in anyway, it doesn't really matter, but I could also add it to the Git ignore. 
put in my uh, uh, changes, put my commit message, I can say uh, hello, world, my first whatever, and then create some. Let's make some real uh, um, uh, clear change. Say, so, okay, now I can commit it, and if I'm ready, uh, I can push it to my uh, Git repository so that everybody else uh, can get this code uh, and uh, base up on this. Of course, I, if you are proficient in Git, you should make a branch and all that, that cool stuff, uh, but this will work uh, uh, as well. Uh, so if I now go to my repository in GitHub uh, and find my inode file, uh, then you can see that uh, my uh, change is uh, now committed. So really a fantastic way of sharing your uh, code. Okay, so let's uh, go down to the, uh, to the real hardcore stuff. Uh, and we will ask the father of the dragons uh, to come up on the stage and uh, do some uh, uh, debugging. So, <laughs> we all know that if we do debugging in Arduino, it means <coughs> you have a serial monitor to pad messages. And in the native version, they added also a plotter. But if you add the plotter, it's a, a one-channel plotter, and you cannot do anything else in the serial monitor. So we've already demonstrated some of the debugging capabilities because in Snoopy you can have the plotter and the serial monitor at the same time, and you have a six-channel plotter. So if you want to uh, analyze um, the things like uh, having two servos that need to make a rotation, uh, that was one of the things why I wanted to make proper for. You can synchronize the two servers, and then you can see the two lines, and you know, okay, this is this is going to be a circle before you even put anything on the even connect the server to the machine. Yeah. Uh, but that's cool, that's great, but that's actually not really really what most programmers consider debugging. If you want to do debugging. We can do hardware debugging, and we can do what I call kind of like software debugging. And hardware debugging, that means that you can really debug your programs without any additional hardware on the ESP8266 and on the Arduino Zero, just by the USB cable connected and stuff like that. You can also buy devices to do debugging, which is even more professional because most of these things are, um, are Expensive uh, and for us professional, the ESP8266 is the most affordable one. So, um, I'm not going to continue on, it's, it's actually all really, really easy to do. Um, well, we made it easy, um, but I'm not going to do it on this one because it's. Um, it's easy, but if you make a mistake, you start to do it. I mean, would distract you, which you guys can count on. But basically, so basically what you do is you go to, uh, go to project properties. In the project properties, you have the Arduino tab, which is exactly the same what you have in the <coughs> sketch. Yeah. And there you choose to manage configurations and you create a new configuration. And for instance, you call it the zero. Yeah. And um, then you actually select here on the buttons. So zero, you select the Gantje hardware. So, the, so I actually made hardware with quotation marks. It's just different compiler commands and stuff like that. So you can have the hardware button set up. And you select the Concord. Uh, the select board, and it's only possible in some way on the programming board. Uh, uh, and then you do buy, and that's it. The next thing you have to do, which is now changing, you now have multiple configurations. Uh, people who have been doing C++ C++ development know about multiple configurations, but it's basically having the same code 
and compiled and contains in different ways. Uh, so you don't have to create separate different um, projects and link code and stuff like that. And you switch between those by just setting it active. Now I set the zero active and they're actually ready. So, but I prepared this uh, and, and I prepared this one. And as you can see here, we have uh, one for the release, which was the original one created. We have one for zero, we have one for zero, and we have one for the release. So let's first go to the zero. Oops, don't break down. <laughs> I, I know this is a good show, but don't break down the stage, please. So um, we're now on, so as you can see also, uh, how is this called again uh, in Eclipse that this changed? Perspective. No, 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 no. The name that you hear at the eye and that shows the decorators. So it's called decorators and the decorators changed because we have another board and you see the gold board there. You see here the gold board and now you actually see that we are the board. So that's a way to know in which configuration you are, stuff like that. Um, so, we, well, I'm using the exact same program as Windows, even though I think my version with 1000 is better. Uh, this one. And so, it's a very simple program. Uh, first, you calculate whether your LED has to be on or off, and the second is the fake. Same thing, you just upload to your Arduino and you can upload with the serial mode. You did that only for Arduino ID, did that. And now, <coughs> so basically, the first one, the LED value is the blue line and that's on off, and the second one, LED value, is the triangle because it's on the slowly up. So basically all our business logic is in here, and then after that uh, we do also do some business logic on setting it, because otherwise we have to do three days, and then the, the only hardware stuff is digital write, and all of that, and the problems is also the writing on the yeah. side. Now we are, now we have the code on the zero, uh, we can uh, work it, so we save the work as, configurations, and here I set up the <coughs> What you need to do is add the alpha file here. You have to set up. Uh, you have to set up here. Did you make Okay. You're telling me it's too much. Is that true? <laughs> okay. Just be part of Um. Asks you to open the work perspective. It's typically clips and we go to the work perspective, and it automatically breaks on the main. So now we're actually breaking on the main, and we're actually working uh, in, on the zero. So we put a breakpoint here, and we just say update. So it continues up there, and then we can, for instance, see here that that value is one. That value 1 is 1, and that value 2 is 0. This is low, this is now 0. <coughs> we can step, uh, we can step into the code, to subscribe. and then we are ensuring free people like messages. And you have here, you can see here all your breakpoints, you can see registers, 
This is nothing I know much about. This is not a simulation, this is really actually all the hardware only. And um, it goes in the only, there's a difference between ESP and the uh, yeah. Yeah. If you mind to, um, to expand the window or the door because you are scrolling as it's terrible. So it's so uh, on the, the zero is really frozen. The mini doesn't even move because it's actually completely frozen. Each time you go there, so now it's the mini is one. And if you go, even though we have been fighting for quite a uh, time, mini is still one because it doesn't take a second to join. This is hardware. We have another way of debugging, um, which is basically when you separate your hardware code from your um, from your um, business logic, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to run your business logic on your PC. Yeah? So if you uh, look at the sketch here, this is actually the business logic, and all the rest is hardware logic, or hardware related. The MILIS is a hardware method, so I put that in variable, and I'll use all the hardware, use the, uh, here my business logic. And that code can run on a PC. So you should, you are able to copy that code in another project and, and run that on your PC and compile it and stuff like that. That's annoying because you have to copy and paste and make any mistakes. So what I did is I made a board that uh, takes your uh, Windows compiler. So you compile it, it runs on Windows, and you can debug it in Windows. Yeah? So then in that case, the release is, is, not, is actually empty and stuff like that but you are capable to divert your business code and if you rely on other people that um, uh, Milis is going to work and digital right is going to work, you have different as well, uh, you have good environment as well. So to demonstrate that, how much time do you have? Yeah, okay. So, we go to the PC debug, we fire it again. Now we're actually working on the PC. So now we compile our code, we're no longer running on this board, this board is now doing whatever it was, and we can work without hardware. The news was on the arm. You were stepping over inside the microcontroller of the arm. Now we are simulating the hardware and we are just checking that our code, if you have multiplication sums, whatever, that's the other Anything that is not hardware related is what you don't need to be connected to a real microcontroller. And to prove that, I open the so if you can, this will show you if you do control click on a method, you see there's nothing there, it's just there, so you can compile your sketch without having to do modifications. So, digital light set. Can you break this? Some input? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've, uh, I've, this is all very new and basically the only user of this thing has been me. Uh, but I did uh, initially take files and you can uh, digital read, get you the content of the file. And there's, it's all open source, 
so you can get the source and even write your own methods. Yeah. So, but that's uh, one of the things I've been doing. Yeah. So, so, it's digi so digital read here is actually, as you see here, it's a method, it's a real thing, and it's actually using using my in file, open it, and then that in data and send me data. Oh no. Yeah. And basically, because you can run this on the PC, uh, for those guys like you probably, or who may be interested in this, I'm going back to this perspective, because you can run this on the PC, you can also do unit tests, which is actually a better way, I think, than working with files, uh, because the WAV file thing is, I tried that, but I'm not really sure it works fine, but unit tests are fine, because there you have all your the only thing you have to do is, if in the change between the work and unit file and unit testing, is in the property C here, you work unit test. So, other uh, important bits of information that might be interesting for you is we don't support only Arduino boards. Uh, Yeah, yeah. So uh, Arduino. So just like in Arduino, thingy, you have JSON files. Uh, we run uh, a, a, a test for compatibility tests. We take all the JSON files which are on the third-party list. We dump them all in here, and for each board that's in there, we create a project uh, that's the default of the default project. We compile it, and more than 400 boards are successful. We only test uploads for these boards because we need hardware to test that. So if you want your board to be added, send this one and you can add it to this board. It's also just a So the entire Arduino family, we also cover uh, the ESP8266, TNC, some of all of them. Some of them. Some of them. Some of the TNC boards. What else do we have? PAC controllers, big controllers. So it's the same coverage that has the Arduino IDE, probably some additional ones, but we are based on the same uh, uh, configuration parts. So as an example, if you want to program a Fairborn uh, 80 mega 328 or a tiny, you can do it easily. You are not stuck to the Arduino finally or the Arduino board. And that's how you can pick up the different platforms. You can also pick up different versions, depending on uh, what type of uh, compiler or what type of tools that you need. Maybe you don't need the latest. Actually, you are uh, leveraging some things, or bugs, or whatever. And also, we have the library manager, which allows you to get the same thing that Arduino IDE has introduced. Uh, uh, Apple, the second uh, main version, something like that, uh, probably a year, uh, where you can pick different libraries, download the libraries, the different versions. Okay, we are in the last 15 minutes. Running some unit tests. And then we should accept questions for you. Okay. So, se avete domande in italiano, fatele pure in italiano, eventualmente le traduco, se avete domande in inglese, fate pure. Se non ci sono domande, ci lasciate male, ci fate rimanere male. Fateci le domande perché noi siamo qui per voi. Io volevo sapere, diciamo, è completamente open source è disponibile su GitHub eh, è completamente open source loro eh, Ian ha il setup dell'hardware per fare per assicurarsi che quando facciamo le modifiche al nostro prodotto la, i, i nostri processi di upload e di compilazione funzionano correttamente e quindi 
diciamo che lui è l'elemento che fa da snodo per quanto riguarda i reati, però è completamente open source, lei può scaricarlo, compilarlo per sé o può scaricarlo. Però a livello hardware il modo di cercare il test, cioè per assicurarsi che i nostri processi di upload funzionano, ad esempio vi faccio un esempio, quando lei fa l'upload sul Arduino ma in micro, che, uh, che switch a porta in funzione se in modalità programmazione o in modalità utilizzo, eh, c'è un'attesa che è necessario introdurre da quando richiede lo switch e quando la porta è di nuovo disponibile. Fa una switch di porta, da come sei a con sei, penso, una cosa di questo genere. Questa procedura va testata perché funzioni effettivamente. Quindi quel genere di test noi lo facciamo sulle porte vere. Però per il resto non lo sviluppo. Siamo già nella fase delle domande, grazie. Eh, eh, ecco il motivo dell'hardware altrimenti si può utilizzare per fare debug, debug hardware però quello è totalmente a suo non servono le cose io penso che è utile fare debug assolutamente sì infatti è una cosa di cui andiamo orgogliosi il fatto che si possa fare debug sulla cosa in merito chiaro come fanno no allora sì, ci sono alcune board che hanno il debug hardware già predisposto sulla board come l'Arduino Zero eh, dipende veramente dal processore ad esempio per fare il debug hardware sull'Arduino 1 o sulla famiglia di processori pre 8 è necessario avere un JTAG o un altro dispositivo che ti consente di parlare con il controllore e di dirgli stai fermo fino a che non te lo dico di cioè c'è un altro canale di comunicazione hardware quindi è necessario una board aggiuntiva uno è c'è una board che viene prodotta da web stessi che producono l'Arduino che ti consente di parlare con l'Arduino mentre tu stai facendo altro e di programmare e di interagirci in debug. Però è una board separata. Sullo zero invece questa funzionalità è inclusa, tant'è che ci sono due USB diverse, una è dedicata al debug, quindi dipende molto dalla board. Sull'ISP 
Non preoccupate dei tuoi problemi in matematica perché i miei, diceva Einstein, sono più grandi dei tuoi. Grazie. Prego. Ci sta il supporto del Purino, non è fatto? Purino. Do we support Isa Purino? Di Balma. I would say no. Look at that, you okay? I would say no. I wasn't first aware of the two things I... I'm not confident about anything I'm going to say now. There's two things which pop up in my mind. There's one word which is in the art video list, which seems to be complete because it is compiled in a journal. It's a very important one. 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 It doesn't use the GCC compiler. If it doesn't use the GCC compiler, it's very little added value because CCC is based on the GCC. Um, and secondly, I was not aware that Turing had hardware. Are you sure it has the regular hardware? Because I never ever heard about that. I know that um, on the zero, they have been telling, yeah, yeah, now we have. But I never heard about Turing that they have the capabilities hardware on it. So the zero really has a chip on it to do the hardware. Yeah. necessiti di traduzione a modello qualunque ma che non c'è non è allora non ha ben capito cioè non gli è molto chiaro sul fatto su come opere il fiori nello specifico non ha capito neanche se sta facendo riferimento alla stessa cord che conosce lui eh, a solo se il se il Curie si programma con il GCC probabilmente c'è qualcosa che si può fare eh? eh, lui è a conoscenza di una board che non si programma con il GCC prodotta da in quella famiglia e sa che se non è GCC la Greenoide, cioè il, quello che facciamo noi, lo slogan eh, non è utilizzabile. E in ogni caso non crede che ci sia una porta di debacco sul Curie. Quindi se non, se non c'è la porta di debug avresti bisogno di comunque un altro hardware, come dicevo prima, tipo per la VR, per arrivare in debug hardware. Lo usiamo anche noi. È supportato eh, il debug hardware sul Mega, essendo, essendo parte della famiglia non è, eh, lei ha bisogno di una scheda dedicata per fare il debug su me. No, stessa... queste informazioni le trovo comunque. Sì, assolutamente. Do uh, we have our, uh, our uh, Twitter accounts or something to do? Ah, okay. uh, just type them into... into... Yeah, yeah, okay, so what, what you want to, uh, to find us, um, what you just do, uh, you go to uh, GitHub, github.com, and then uh, you find uh, our technical lab. And uh, we have uh, repositories. Oh no, no, it's an organization, right? So watch it. Uh, this, here. this is us. And then you can find all of us here. This is me. This is me. <laughs> Okay, and, uh, okay, another way to get in touch with us is by uh, Twitter. Yes. Uh, we can, uh, I can share, uh, siccome sono italiano, se avete, e voi mi parlate praticamente tutto italiano, eh, yes. eh, ci potete, ci potete, mi potete contattare anche direttamente, mi, mi trovate su Twitter, can you take my Twitter account in the search repository? Glielo faccio scrivere. Eh, così eh, io mi chiamo Roberto Giacco e eh, il mio Twitter account è R-L-O-G-I-A-C-C-O il tempo è scaduto eh, vi invitiamo a venirci a trovare siamo al padiglione eh, Padiglione 9, 7, Padiglione 7, Stan, 
Next to our Do you Booth. A. C. 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 Uh, abbiamo delle magliette, uh, se volete contribuire al progetto ci, so ci sostenete fondamentalmente acquistando la maglietta. Che sono tra l'altro carine, sono nere, spinano per noi. <ride> A me mi aiutano tantissimo. Thank you, guys. Thank Grazie you. mille.